Hello everyone, my name is Azatru and welcome to another Star Wars Battlefront video. This will be my best bin expansion review. I did one for the Outer Rim DLC a few months ago and it was well received so I thought I would do one again for best bin. So for those of you that are undecided on buying the season pass or the best bin DLC separately, this video is for you. Best bin is now a separate purchable expansion so you don't need the season pass and it retails for around £10 or $15 I think. I'll be going over all the different aspects of this DLC, so what will you get for your money, and giving you my honest opinion on each of them, and I've played around 10-12 to 12 hours worth of Best Bin game time, so I do actually have quite a bit of experience in this expansion. If you are yet to subscribe to my channel, make sure you do so you'll never miss another Star Wars Battlefront video. The main part of this DLC are the maps, and I am going to be talking about them first. For starters, the DLC is beautiful throughout. Bespin has been recreated incredibly. I fell in love with the visuals, and it has a lot to offer in its diversity uh, to Battlefront in terms of scenery. The Cloud City map was great to play on, but due to the regular occurrences of it being played in the Best Bin playlist, I got bored of it very quickly. I blame the playlist bug which has now been fixed, which is great and it is nice to hop on to that map as it does look and play fine. The Carbon Freezing Chamber map is quite cool because there is many places you recognise from Empire Strikes Back all rolled into one. Due to the fact it is all inside, the colour scheme is darker and this all offers a very nice change. I think the blacks and the oranges work very very well and it's a very nice map to look at. I think at times it gets a bit too clustered in the tight corridors on certain modes at certain points. Unfortunately, it does take away a little bit from the experience but it is not a bad map and I do enjoy playing on it. The Fire Squadron map is the best yet for the mode. With having interactive large objects in the sky and a beautiful backdrop means I have loved absolutely every single time playing on it. The cloud cars are good for variety, but I'll speak about them more in detail as I was very underwhelmed. So stick around until the end of the video to get a full opinion on those vehicles. If you like Fire Squadron, you'll absolutely love this map and don't want to play anything else. Bionip Laboratories is probably the least memorable of the maps for me. It is good for smaller modes, but I prefer to play larger modes, and there's actually quite a lot of repetitive and limited environment, uh, very similar to Cloud City in my opinion, so that does degrade this map just a little bit in my opinion. However, Administrator's Palace is really fun to play on, and the red sky offers a unique colour palette mixing with the usual white insides. It is, in my opinion, the best map out of all the four maps, not including the Fire Squadron one. It works particularly well with the new mode Sabotage, which I will talk about now. I have not fell in love with the new mode Sabotage like I did with Extraction, with the Outer Rim DLC. I loved Extraction a lot, and if you saw my review, you will definitely know the reasons why. Despite this, Sabotage uses the heroes to its advantage, four heroes at a time is really good and I do like it. It gives players a chance to play as them, but I wish they spawned in less predictable places. Uh, but I do enjoy the way that it works, and like I said, please dice, just try and spread out the hero pickups a little bit more. The mode complements teamwork, and the very end stage is very, very fun. It's very similar to the ending of Extraction when it is very, very close, especially with the time ticking down and you just need to get a couple of good kills to push through. I hope that the Death Star DLC has a mode that continues the great works from the DLC. I don't have an idea what it will be, but please dice, make another good mode. Moving on to the heroes of the DLC, Lando and Dengar. I think Dengar was really well designed and is super fun to play as. Lando I think should just be buffed a little bit, but he is fun to play as as well. I think their voiceovers are great. I know that Simon Pegg and Billy D. Williams both voiced their characters, which is great, and I really am enjoying playing as these heroes. Now, the problem is I didn't I actually haven't been able to play as the heroes a lot. I still need to get to grips with both of them in, you know, use their traits to their full advantage, use their abilities to their full advantage. So I've just got to get to grips with them, but they are very unique and cool to use. And I must say, they're actually, in my opinion, much nicer to play as 
other than Luke Skywalker as the six base heroes in the game. So uh, that's a good plus and I do commend the people that did work on these heroes for this DLC. The two weapons in the Bespin expansion are the X8 Knight Sniper, the gun Lando uses, and the EE4. Let's start off with the EE4. This acts like the EE3 but has a higher rate of fire and a shorter range. It is good but somewhat overpowered. If you're watching well into the future the blaster may actually have been nerfed by now. I'm sure it will but currently it works incredibly well on smaller modes and in close quarter situations. You can mow down enemies in like two hits and it is very very powerful but a little bit too much and because everyone's unlocking it because it's good everyone's sort of using it and I, I'm trying to not use it so anyway moving on to the second weapon the night sniper. It's very unique it's a very unique addition to battlefront and uh, i'm really glad this has released so it has a heat vision scope which is fantastic and it works really well on other planets like endor but the cooling is even better like seriously you can shoot for quite a while with it i think it should just be a little bit more to complement the lack of damage in my opinion i was genuinely expecting it to be really good in terms of damage but it just isn't like, I don't know, there's just something about it. If you watch my Bare Bones Battlefront episode 15 episode, you'll see what I mean. Also, the accuracy at range is very inaccurate. It just drops off very quickly, and I don't really like that. So please, 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 guys, just buff it a little bit. I think the four to five shots on average it takes to kill is not very good. I think an increase in terms of its low rate of fire or its increase in damage would make it much more useful. And uh, that's all I've got to say on these brand new weapons. They are unlocked via hook contracts, just keep that in mind, but they're very easy to get. The star cards are less about killing and more about helping your team this time round. The shot grenade offers a unique output, but it can feel hard to get shots with. The disruption star card I think is very useful and I like it a lot. Although I just wish there was an indicator on screen if you actually had knocked anything out with the use of the card. Uh, because the feedback, lack of feedback is really, really annoying. I know you get like a, a little pop up in terms of if you've actually disabled anything, but it doesn't say what, it just gives you a score. And I find that really disappointing. And it's the only thing holding this weapon, well, this star card back. The scout binoculars are much more useful in open maps. So not necessarily the ones in the best bin DLC. So I feel like their use is a little bit limited. If there is an enemy that you can't quite kill, making them show up for all your team is very helpful and it's just, you know, a quirky sort of star card to use if you did want to use it and uh, it does have its uses in, you know, the larger game modes, I must say. Finally, I just want to talk about the first post-launch vehicle in Battlefront, the Cloud Car. The flight of it is not really enjoyable to me, nor does it deal enough damage in Fight Squadron. I really wanted to enjoy using this vehicle, but I was very disappointed when I finally got my hands on it. Hopefully a future patch will buff its damage just a little. I must say though, even with excellent cooling, it is a positive in that sense. The blasters just seem to shoot potatoes at times and it's really disappointing when you've got, you know, X-Wings chasing after you and TIE Fighters shooting you down very, very quickly. In conclusion, this DLC is better than Outer Rim and offers more variety, which is great. There are some drawbacks in some maps and weaponry, but it does deserve 8 Tuscans. And in case you don't know what that means, it is my scoring system and it's just a bit of fun too. Outer Rim got 7 Tuscans for further reference. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this helped you decide if you will or will not purchase Bespin. Make sure you click the like button if it did help you in your purchasing decision. And if you missed any of the two previous videos on the screen, be sure to check them out so you can stay up to date with Battlefront news. And I shall see you all in my next Star Wars Battlefront video. Goodbye.